Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? That's right, it's hump day. Yeah, uh-huh. Did nobody remembers that commercial with the camel? Anyways, let's talk about sponsors for today's video. Display. Check out Dope Metal Prints at the link in the video description. They're amazing, they look gorgeous. They have officially licensed products from a bunch of different places, including Cyberpunk 2077, you can pick it up. And if you use the link in the video description, coupon code UFT, you save 15%. People have picked up literally hundreds of disc plates and you could be one of them to make your place even better. And they don't just have large ones like these, they also have extra large ones where it's like four panels that you could take up an entire wall with and make it look gorgeousity. So do that down below and let's talk about today's hot news, which is also hot because we're talking about AMD's bulldozer, which is a spicy little uh, petunia, if you know what I'm saying. In case you don't remember, there was actually a lawsuit filed against AMD back in 2015 regarding how the architecture of bulldozer was set up because AMD claimed their bulldozer architecture had eight cores, but really, technically, if you looked at it in a weird way, they were actually just like, super threads and not actual physical cores. So it was actually like four cores and eight threads, but not like they have threads now with simultaneous multi-threading. They were bigger and badder and stronger. And it was a weird like little nuance that people were just like, no, you lied to us AMD. And AMD is just like, dog, we'll call it cores if we want, yo. Well, apparently the lawsuit has been settled and AMD is gonna be taking a hit of $12.1 million in order to pay it out. However, there are a few caveats. One, you had to purchase your bulldozer CPU in the state of California. Number two, it has to specifically be the bulldozer architecture, nothing from pile driver or excavator. And number whatever I'm on, it can't be any of the subsidiary uh, core setups. So it couldn't be the six core or the four core. It's only specifically if you bought the eight core bulldozer, that's it. So it's not really a big hit. AMD anticipated that they were actually gonna take a $60 million bath on this. And it just turns out that it's a fifth of that, which I guess is good. But consider with how much money they're making on Ryzen these days, I bet you they were scared that somebody else is gonna sue them for what Ryzen's gonna did wrong or something, I don't know. People like to sue, because Lisa sue. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the only place my brain went. Anyways, uh, in case you live in California or you purchased your CPU in the state of California and you had a bulldozer eight core, you can get your $35 today, not today, soon. You'll be able to get your 35 bucks. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. And then let's talk about something that's uh, one of the weirdest motherboards that I've ever seen. This is a Chinese X99 motherboard. So we're hearkening back again to roughly 2015, 2016, somewhere in there uh, for the high-end desktop Intel chips. And it has both DDR3 and DDR4 support on the exact same motherboard. This is something that's different. I know that Asus, when Skylake came out, had Z170s that had either DDR4 or DDR3 support. This one has it on the same board. The catch is you can only use one at a time. You cannot fuse them together. It supports up to 1866 on DDR3 and 2400 megahertz on DDR4. Kind of cool. I don't know who needs this, but if you do, congratulations. You can buy one motherboard and run two different types of RAM. Speaking of, I don't know who needs this, Cerebra Systems has shown off a wafer that is 12 inches in size, so a foot long, and has one trillion transistors. Because you know, you got companies like AMD trying to go, you know, multi-chip module and chiplets and all that kind of stuff. Well, Cerebra Systems was just like, let's make it big. Let's not, no, scaling down, screw that. Just gigantic transistors, which in case you wanna compare it to Nvidia's largest GPU die, it is 56 times smaller than this gigantic wafer of one trillion transistors, which comes in at 42,225 square millimeters, as opposed to Nvidia's 815 square millimeters. Pathetic, Nvidia, what are you doing? I want a GPU the size of my torso, and if I don't get it, you know where to find me. Speaking of torsos, Bad segue. Canon, they have unveiled their 90D. <laughs> Reese lost it. They unveiled their 90D DSLR as well as their Mark M6 Mark II. Uh, the 90D having a lot of good things that make it like I want to pick it up. 
Um, so it has 32 megapixel CMOS sensor APS-C, 4K recording up to 30, and 1080p recording up to 120, as well as the dual pixel autofocus, which is quite premium on the, the Canon stuff. We've got a good one in the Sony a7 III here, but picking up a 90D, which would presumably be uh, $800 cheaper than the a7 III, might not be a bad idea. You know what else isn't a bad idea? Going to space and hopping around. Okay, because that's what the astronauts did on the moon, and that's what SpaceX is trying to do with their Star Hopper, which finally successfully completed its first hop test, which it failed previously, but now it can hop, and you can watch it hop, and it went. Congratulations, everybody. We hopped on the Earth with the spaceship. And let me congratulate everybody who has a TV potentially coming up because LG, Panasonic, and Vizio, or also known as the UHD Alliance, got together to introduce a new setting on TVs because you have TV makers introducing that horrible, disgusting, awful motion smoothing that just looks like somebody uh, smeared butter on everybody's motion, and it's terrible. I hate it so much. And I, whenever I'm at a friend's house and I see they haven't turned it off from stock, I turn it off for them. And they never say anything, but I know they're thankful. Anyways, the point point is the UHD Alliance is getting together to introduce a filmmaker mode, which is going to be basically the opposite of the smoothing experience that give out of the box default settings of correct color, aspect ratio, and frame rate of the original film that was filmed. So it could give you a better viewing experience so that you can watch films the way that the content creator meant for them to be watched, not with this disgusting looking like it's a soap opera on every freaking motion picture I've ever seen in my entire life. Motion smoothing nonsense. <sighs> Speaking of TVs though, OnePlus has officially tweeted out about the OnePlus TV coming off the production line with the CEO picking up the first one off of it saying that it's coming out and it's been two years of dreams milestones. And why does OnePlus need to make a TV? Why were they thinking that this is a dream that needed to be realized? I don't know. I wanted it to be a Ninja Turtle when I grew up. Just because I had the dream doesn't mean I needed to fulfill it. But I could also be a Ninja Turtle and you don't know it because we're supposed to stay in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> I crop fried at night and eat pizza. Speaking of more TV stuff, uh, some companies that were responsible for illicit streaming sites such as Jetflix and iStream at all, which got torrent copies of things and didn't pay for licenses for anything. Well, eight people are facing federal charges for running those sites. Uh, and it looks like those sites will likely be shut down in the coming future. But uh, yeah, a bunch of people getting indicted on this stuff. And then let's talk about something that nobody needed. Apparently they do though. Popeye's Chicken has an app for letting you know if the sandwich, which I don't even know what that is. I haven't tried it because, well, there is a Popeye's Chicken in the mall close to us. Should probably see if they have the sandwich. Anyways, apparently the sandwich is sold out in a lot of places. So Popeye's has an app to let you know if it's in stock, but they don't order delivery or anything like that. What, no. It's a sandwich app. It's a, it's a sandwich notification app. I need it. <laughs> Shut up, please. <laughs> and then somebody who created Bitcoin is getting uh, hit with the books in a lawsuit regarding stealing other people's rights to Bitcoin and the rights to a company. Uh, this is a person who said that they were Satoshi Nokomoto and uh, a lot of people were just like, nah fam, you're not but he says he is, so he's the creator, even though all of the evidence uh, kind of suggests otherwise. It's a $10 billion lawsuit in which this person is accused of stealing somebody's Bitcoin, which coming from the fact that this happened in 2014, or before 2014, it was worth pennies and now it's worth billions. So it's a big deal, it's a big deal. He's getting, he's getting hit with the books, has to pay up. And you know what else is a big deal? Nothing about what I'm talking about in this article, which is the Pixel 4 design, uh, cool. Looks like what everybody thought it would. Ha still has bezels, has a gigantic rear camera bump. Cool. I'll, camera bump, uh, I'll probably get one. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, let's talk about more Google stuff, which is somebody who was working on Google's Waymo auto driving stuff. Uh, this, the, the Google engineer, Anthony Lewandowski. He is being indicted on 30 criminal counts of stealing technology from Google and then selling it to Uber, technically, because he made his own company Auto and then Uber bought Auto. Anyways, he downloaded a bunch of designs for LiDAR technology, kind of compiled it and then sold it. 
And uh, yeah, no, he's 30 criminal cases and could potentially see a lot of time in jail and kind of not be around anymore. So we'll see how that goes. And then let's talk about something somebody should get sued for, but not really, just in that like cute way of like, oh, copyright infringement is so cute. Um, what I'm talking about is a handheld Sega Dreamcast that somebody made over on YouTube. This is G-Man Mods, posted this video on August 15th. I'm just now finding out about it, but a portable handheld Sega Dreamcast, which I mean, just kind of shows you, you don't need a Switch Lite, pathetic. Come on. I also found out today that they're doing HD remasters of the Lion King and Aladdin games from the Game Gear. What I was going to say before Reese got so excited is why do you need the HD remasters when you could just play them on your portable Dreamcast? Huh? 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 You don't. You don't need HD remasters. And you don't need this episode of Hot News to continue any longer. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. It really means a lot. It would also mean a lot if you use our link down in the video description to pick yourself up a disc plate. Yeet my body. Check them out at the link in the video description, display.com forward slash UFD tech official. Enter UFD as a coupon code, save 15%. Get these large ones, get medium ones, get super extra Jamundo ones that you put on a uh, wall, kind of like a portrait of yourself that's 16 feet high. Anyways, let's talk about that later and my insecurities and needing to see myself blown up on a giant screen. Let's, okay, I'm done. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Get subscribed to stay up to date on hot news. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, Aroni. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. And let me congratulate everybody